They took a school of violinists and divided them into three groups. Teacher material, the merely good, and world class. And they asked them the same question. Ever since you first picked up the violin, how many hours of practice have you put into it? And a pattern emerged. Teacher material had practiced about 4,000 hours, the merely good had practiced about 8,000 hours, and the world class had practiced about 10,000 hours. In study after study with pianists, chess players, master criminals, the same pattern emerged. And so this became known as the 10,000 hour rule. So the conclusion was the following. As long as you're good enough to get into the school, the number of deliberate hours of practice would be the only thing that would really differentiate you from your competitors. Now, Outliers is an extremely interesting book, but it doesn't really tell you how to become an outlier. So I've picked out three huge implications of the book about success that should help all of us. The first one, and my favorite, when you're on your first few hours of doing something, stop expecting to be good. I remember when I put out my first animated video, some people said, well, your animation sucks, your voiceover sucks, and I took that and I said, oh, okay, this is great, people are telling me what I need to improve on, but at the same time, I realized that that was completely natural and it didn't affect me at all. But again, what are people's thought process? I've put in a few hours into something, I'm gonna be good. It's like, oh, it's really surprising that I'm not as good as an entire team of animators that have put in thousands and thousands of hours into their craft, work together, and that's literally all they do, and charge $5,000 for a single minute of animation, and my little first animation isn't as good as theirs. But that's literally how people think. Someone starts a business, and it's like, I've had losses in the first few months, which is completely normal for a business, but what is he gonna say? Well, maybe I'm not so good at this business thing, and quit. You take someone to the tennis court, and they play tennis for the first time, they hit the ball 10 times, and it hits the net every single time. And what do they say? Um, well, maybe this isn't really my sport. <laughs> it's like, do you know how long it took me to play my first tennis game? Took me probably 10 hours of practice to play the most miserable tennis game ever played in the history of mankind, and it consisted of three hits of both players back and forth, and that was it. The second big implication is that talent is overrated. In the studies that they did, there were no naturals, meaning a person with only 4,000 hours of practice that was world class. There were no grinds either, meaning a person with 10,000 hours of practice and being a teacher material. And I don't have to look at those studies to know that talent is overrated. Most of the time, what gets labeled as talent is hours and hours of practice that isn't seen. So how do I know this? Because I've been put on that pedestal before. When I was in college, I remember taking this slightly complicated statistics class, and people were really struggling in it, and the average would usually be a 50 on the exams, and I would get 100 basically every single time. Now, at the same time, all I did in those classes were sleep. That's it, I just went there and slept while the people sitting next to me would sit there and take notes and try to work really hard. Now, when the exams would come back, they would look at me and they would say, you're a genius, okay, you're a god. Basically, I became this god. How do you do this? All you do is sleep and look, you got a 100, I got a 50. But again, what was the reality? And the reality isn't going to be disclosed because the person with success has way too many things that are cool going on in his life. So I had a great social circle, I was doing great things, I wasn't gonna sit there and explain what happened. But what happened? Well, here's the actual truth. So when we'd go back, I would spend hours and hours every night doing every single problem. That's, by the way, why I was so tired the next day in class. What they did was they would take those notes, those mediocre notes they took in class, and maybe spend 30 minutes or an hour in their room. And that's really where the difference came from. Now, not only was it that, but it was accumulated advantage. Even if we had gone years back when we were in middle school, I would have been the one putting in the hours, they wouldn't. And over time, it's hundreds and thousands of hours of advantage. But again, 
in college, what is it? Some people are good at math, some people aren't good at math. The third big implication, as long as you're good enough, deliberate practice is what will set you apart. Now, let's break down that as long as you're good enough part. Think if you're 40 years old, have never kicked a ball in your life, and you say, well, I want to be a professional soccer player, that's not going to work. But I think most of us have realistic goals. I think most of us are good enough. But what we're lacking is the deliberate practice. Again, if I go back to the college example, what those people would do when they would come into class would be, oh, I studied all night last night. And again, what did they mean? Out of every hour, I spent 50 minutes eating, talking to my roommate, being on Facebook, and then 5 to 10 minutes actually doing the work. You have to put in that deliberate amount of hours of practice where you're solely focusing on getting better at your craft. And if you do that, that is what is going to set you apart.